silent mode. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Connie Albert. I am one of the co-presenters of the Part B application and the Consolidated School-Wide Spending Plan WebEx session that is being presented today. My colleague, Laura Sosi, is with me in the room, and we will proceed in how schools can apply for supplemental Part B funds for the upcoming school year. Again, protocol for the session, as a courtesy to all participant, participants, please mute your phone during the training session. The PowerPoint presentation will be available on the BIE, BIE website at the following tabs. You'll go to the Programs tab, Special Education, and the Fiscal Management, and the title is going to be FY 2015-16 Part B Application Consolidated School-Wide Budget CEIS and Coordinated Agreement Unit. The recorded session will be available on the WebEx link https double slash dcma100.webex.com and click on the recorded session. Again, I will provide this information after the session along with the PowerPoint. So let's talk a little bit about Part B excess funds, and we wanted to just give you some school background and information in regards to how Part B works. In the 25 CFR 39104, it, it says, how must a school's base funding provide for students with disabilities? Each school must provide students with disabilities by reserving 15% of academic base funds to support special education programs. That's the 15% ISEP, that is your base academic funds. This is where most of your academic salaries will be located at. Again, it's your base funds. And B, a school may spend all or part of the 15% academic base funds reserved under paragraph A1 of this section on school-wide programs to benefit all students, including those without disabilities, only if the school can document it has met all the needs of the students with disabilities with such funds. And after having done so, there are unspent funds remaining from each fund. So, Again, in 25 CFR, it does say that 15% of your ISEP funds has to be dedicated to students with disabilities. In 25 CFR, CFR 39105, are additional funds available for special ed? A, schools may supplement the 15% base academic funds reserved under section 39104 for special education with funds available under Part B of the Individuals with Disabilities Act, IDEA. To obtain Part B funds, the schools must submit an application to the BIE DPA office. IDEA funds are available only if the school demonstrates that funds reserved under 30, Section 39104A are inadequate to pay for services needed by eligible ISEP students with disabilities. So you have your 15% ISEP funds. If that was all the funds you had and it's still not enough to provide the basic academic programs for students with disabilities, then you may apply for Part B supplemental funds. If a school determines that they have excess special ed okay, some schools when you look at your budget, can demonstrate that you probably don't need to apply for excess funds. If this is you as a school, we are asking that um, you not apply for Part B funds. However, you still need to follow IDEA requirements for students with disabilities. So in that case, you're going to have to still submit a Part B application and as we go through this process, you're going to indicate none, that you do not need any Part B funds, 
and you still have to get it signed by your school board because in the Part B application, it has the LEA assurances that all school must follow that they will ensure that students with disabilities are receiving the services that they need to improve academic performance. So that's what this slide is speaking to. The two previous slides is just to give you some information in regards to the law, in regards to the 15% ICEP and the Supplemental Excess Part B Fund. We will open the WebEx for questions, so if you would please write them down. We will open it up so that there's an opportunity for everyone to ask questions regarding this application. So who is responsible for completing the documents? The school administrator, administrator in cooperation with the special ed coordinator and lead special education teacher and the business manager and business, te business technician. Now, it is a crucial that the three of you develop a plan in regards to how your Part B funds are not only excess funds, but how those funds are going to be used. A majority of schools use it for salaries, related services, which is really important that the students get their speech, OT, and related services for them so that they can show academic growth. The school administrator has the responsibility to access the application and complete the documents. There are usually only three people that have access into Native Star at each of your schools. You can share it or you can provide the password to the individuals that are going to be completing the application together. So how do you access the Part B application? The, ac the Part B application is available on the Native Star link which we will go through. And actually, I'm going to just stop for a minute and get to the live site because we know that there are a majority of new people in our BIE schools who are coming in and are unfamiliar on where to locate these applications. So give me a moment as I get to the live site. Okay, so I've gone to the live site on the BIE EDU location. Where you're going to find Native Star is you're going to scroll all the way down to the screen. On the right-hand side at the bottom, it says Native Star BIE Tools for Continuous School Improvement. To log in, you're going to click here. And then you're going to lo input your password information. Okay, give me a second here. I'm getting Oh. Okay, it appears that we have more than 100 people on our Webex today. So those that logged in late will not be available able to participate. So we will recommend that they go to the recorded session so that they can see the, or if you can log in together with a school that might be in your area rather than having several phone lines being taken up, that would be great. But it does appear that the session is closed. We've got our 100 maximum. So you're going to go to the BIE, you're gonna put in your login. And I'm going to go to the test site just because I don't want to go to individual schools at this time. So I'm on the live website test site and where you're going to locate the native star 
the Part B application is under the Completed Forms tab located next to the Home tab. So if you click on that, you're going to scroll down. There is a scroll bar on the right-hand side that can allow you to scroll down the list of documents that are available for title as well as for special ed. You're going to scroll all the way down until you locate the LEA School IDEA Part B Application 1516. This is a, a submission form, so you're going to fill this document in very similar to what it was like last year. We have made some modifications to the document because there was a lot of confusion specific to this page called the LEA IDEA Part B Submission Statement. You have three choices as a school. Once you develop your plan and you've determined that you do need Part B funds, you will indicate to us whether you want no funds because you have sufficient funds using either your ISEP Part 15% funds or you had enough carryover from school year 14-15 to provide the necessary needs of your students with disabilities. The second selection that you can have is portion. This says that we have carryover, we have 15%, but we don't need as much money as we got last year because it was just too much or we failed to use it and we had to return part of the funds back to DPA. So you can select portion and in portion amount, we want to know how much of that would you like. Some schools have selected half of what they've received previously. Some schools have put in a quarter. It's going to really depend on what you as a school plan on how the use of Part B funds will be used. And then the third selection you have is entire. That says that we would like, we are requesting the entire amount similar to what we received last year. Just a heads up that we don't know what the school student weight is at this time. We don't know how much we're getting from the Department of Ed. So we've had some schools asking that information. We don't have that information at this time. So we recommend that you use your student weights that you receive from us for this year because that's all we have. Then the last two part components on this first page is optional. You can choose to participate in CEIS where you can use up to 15% of your Part B funds for to go to general education, but this is a red flag. You want to make sure that you're not forgetting about your students with disabilities, that you're ensuring that all the funds for Part B are being used and your ISEP funds are being used for students with disabilities first before you give any funds to CEIS. Laura will be covering that in a few minutes in regards to CEIS. Your other option is if you plan to participate in the cooperative agreement unit. We have many schools who participate in a cooperative agreement unit where they have maybe one special ed coordinator and that coordinator goes out and serves three different schools at, throughout the school year. The schools have found this to be efficient in regards to funds so they don't have to hire a, court, a special ed coordinator at each school. However, you still need to have a special ed certified teacher at each of the schools. So this is optional to schools as well. Okay. You're going to notice at the very bottom it says pages. You'll need to click on each page to go to the next one. Once you have selected what you want to do, none, portion, or entire, CEIS or CAU, you want to save it next and save so that you can keep this document. We had a lot of issues last year where schools we're not saving it and had to redo it over and over again. So use your cues at the very bottom to tell you what you want it to do. Next and save, save, 
save and preview. And then the last two boxes are save and send for review. That's when it's going to go to your ELO ADD or your native star coach. And then close. But use your tabs at the bottom, your pages at the bottom. I'm going to click on page two. This is critical. This is your LEA assurances. This is something that you need to share with your school board before they sign, saying that they're going to follow all the IDEA laws in regards to students with disabilities, and that the school board is going to be responsible for all fiscal accountability of students with disabilities. When we do a fiscal on-site review, this is an important document because the school board is saying our school is going to follow the laws of special ed. So it's important that the school board understand what they are signing and what you as a school are responsible for in relation to students with disabilities. Some schools have read this to their school board. Some schools have provided this earlier so that the school board members understand what they're signing prior to approval. Those are just a few things that the schools are doing. Again, you want to next and save or save and preview. I'm going to go to page three. And this is on CEIS. This is the cooperative agreement unit. Schools can choose to participate or not participate. So they just need to click one of these two boxes. Make sure that you understand what CEIS is, that you can only use up to 15% of your part, total Part B fund allocation. And again, Laura will cover that in a few minutes. Something that's new that we added here is that, well, it's not new, but we just kind of made it a little bit more clear, is that if your school chooses to participate in CEIS, you will not be eligible for unmet needs because you are telling us that we have sufficient funds to take care of our students with disabilities, and because we have sufficient funds, we're going to give part of our special ed funds to general education. Therefore, there's not a need for you to apply for unmet needs if you're telling us that. There is an eligibility requirement that schools that choose to participate in CEIS must be at meets requirements at our level of determination that's going to be coming out this summer. Now, you can choose to participate right now in CEIS because we don't know your school level at this time. We don't know if you meet requirements. So you can choose it right now, but if we get, when you get your level of determination and you are at meets, you cannot use your funds for CEIS. Directions. If the school is eligible and chooses to utilize the funds associated with CEIS, you're going to complete the information below. Number one, you got to do a CEIS budget. How much of that Part B funds are you going to give to general education? Number two, who's going to be responsible for monitoring those children that are in general education? It cannot be a special ed teacher or coordinator because these funds are going to general education, it should be someone in general ed. Number three, select the type of intervention the school plans to use. Are you going to use your funds for professional development or are you going to use your funds for instructional intervention programs? C, describe to us what your plan is for the CEIS program. What are you going to do with these funds? and include the scientifically research-based strategies, intervention, and progress monitoring to be used. Remember, if you participate in CEIS, you have to monitor those two children for two consecutive years because you're monitoring to ensure that you're providing the interventions before um, they go into special ed or they're considered for special ed. So we're t what the goal is is to try to prevent kids from going into special ed. That's what CEIS can be used for. So you have to monitor those children for two consecutive years. 
And that information needs to go in NASIS under the Enrollment tab. So you'll have to mark those children that are participating in that, and Laura will go into that. Number four, indicate the number of students who will participate in the CEIS program. So you'll need to give us a number in this box. And number five, describe the CEIS entrance and exit tools. For example, universal screening data, suspension data, attendance data, and criteria on how students were identified. And it should be noted, there should be a process on how kids exit this program and that they can exit at any time. So that's just on CEIS. Again, this is a submission document, so all you need to do is fill in this information. The next document on page four is the CAU, Cooperative Agreement Unit. Again, you just need to indicate you're planning to participate or you're planning not to participate. The Cooperative Agreement is a formal written arrangement between the school designed to assist in the provision of services to students with disabilities. In this portion, you will have to provide a narrative that describes the purpose, the scope of work, and a budget. The CAU budget will now be included in the Consolidated School-Wide Special Ed Spending Plan budget. We've accommodated that, and we'll show you that as well. So if you're hiring in your cooperative agreement unit, you're hiring an OT person, you just put it in that CSW spending plan. If you're hiring a clerk, then that we've left space in there for you to do that, input those. So the CAU budget now becomes together so it's all consolidated as one, rather than making two separate budgets. If you're a CAU and you have three schools, that you're working with, then you need to indicate that in that budget as well. You'll want to also identify the amount of funds that's going to the CAU, and then you'll have to put the location and the location code on where those funds, where we should send those funds to. So for example, we have one school on Navajo where one is a primary designee. Do you, usually they have all their funds go to that one school. So we need to know who that is going to be and indicate as such. Page five, this is where the ELO, ADD, or native coach is responsible for reviewing. You're going to review the Part B application and the consolidated school-wide spending plan together to ensure that it's cohesive and well thought out. So the ELO or the ADD will say they've checked and reviewed their statement, they've looked at their CEIS plan, they've looked at their Part B application, their school-wide budget, and all you have to do is click on each one of these and they will save and send for review or provide you um, written information, feedback or comments that they have for you. The last page, page six, is the LEA certification page. <clears throat> the, yes, this goes before you go to the ELO and it, it'll kind of fly that way when you submit it. The schools will submit the, um, type in the school name, the location code, the ELO office, and here we've made some modifications. The BIE school agrees to comply with all requirements of the IDEA 204 and other applicable program statutes, that's spelled wrong. The school board has reviewed the, uh, and approved the Part B application in its entirety, which includes the following documents. And then right below, and recorded in the minutes of the school board meeting, and this is where a school will indicate the school board that it was provided to and the day it was approved. The signatures below cannot be signed before the date of the school board approval. So if your school board is tomorrow, you should put tomorrow's date and your school board members should not sign it until tomorrow. What we've had in previous years, not last year, it's gotten much better. We had school boards, we had schools complete this 
and sign it, but wasn't approved by the school board until two weeks later. Um, that's not acceptable. We want that. We want to ensure, and we have to show to OSEP that it was presented to the school board and the community prior to being it approved by the um, prior to the date that it is signed. So the school board president will sign and type his name in or her name. The school official will need to sign and type their name in. The education line officer will also need to sign and print their type their name in. So we have the school board, the authorized school official, the ELO office. All those individuals will need to sign this document prior to being uploaded into the Native Star. Please make sure that the names are typed below the signature. It's been uh, very difficult for us to uh, read who's signing, so it's very important that you uh, type the name of the person who's going to be providing the signature. Once you have completed the Part B application on the Native Star, you're going to save and send for review. This is then goes to the ELO ADD office, and again, then they'll fill out page five, and they will look at your consolidated school-wide spending plan to make sure that it looks complete, that you, they have an opportunity to speak with you, or provide feedback on your application. So I'm going to get off the live website and go back to the PowerPoint so that in the PowerPoint, what we've given is instructions to the same thing I did just a few minutes ago, all right? So we tried to do a step-by-step -step guidance for you because we know that many of you um, are trying to write everything down or have kids coming in all of a sudden or emergency has come into place. So we made our PowerPoint so it's a guidance document as well. So you can see as I go through this, and I'm going to skip through it, what I just did a few minutes ago. Step one, step two, where to locate the Part B application on the complete tabs, how to scroll down and locate the document, choosing none, portion, or entire, how to save, the LEA assurances that we spoke of that needs to go before your school board, and then we're going to go into the coordinated, then we're going to go into coordinated intervening services, but I'm going to take you all off mute for just a moment and ask any questions that you may have. The conference is now in talk mode. What questions do you have? 16. Hi, Connie. This is Donna Moore from Mescalero. Yes, Donna. And I just wanted to verify that um, we have to send it up for Casey's signature before it's approved by the school board, correct? No. Uh, no. What you're going to do, um, thank you, Donna, for clarifying and asking that question because I may not have stated it correctly. You're going to prepare the document. You're going to save and send for review. Casey will, or Rihanna will review it. Once they approve it, then it's going to come back to you, and then you will print page six and then get signatures. Okay, so are they, is Casey going to sign it at that time? Yes, after the school board signs it. Oh, after the school board signs it. Yes, okay. after the school board signs it. Because we want to make sure that the ELO sees or ADD or the Native Star Coach sees the signatures prior to him or her signing it so that they can verify that it went before the school board. So then do I need to get those signatures before I submit it? Um, what, you, what I would recommend that you do is you print up your Part B application along with your consolidated school-wide plan, print it all up, prepare it for your school board, 
and then present it to them in its entirety. Tell them what you're doing and what you're planning to do for next school year. Once they approve it, they can sign and date it, and then you would send it to just the signature page to Casey, and Casey would sign it and send it back to you so you, so you can upload it into Native Star. Okay. So when, after I finish the document in, in Native Star, I guess I'm, I'm still a little bit confused. Um, I finished the document in Native Star, mm -hmm. so before I click um, to save and submit, I have to do it before the school board. You're going to fill out the Part B application, you're going to save and submit, then it's going to go into Casey's queue or Rihanna's queue. Okay. Then they'll review it. They're going to either accept, send it back to you for revision, or, um, and there's another page in here that's got it. I think it's revisions required or something like that. If they accept it, then you're going to print up page six. Okay. And have that ready for your school board with the whole package and get their signatures. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. From a school point of view, when they're doing the application, what is the difference in, after they do each page, do they click on save or save in preview and what's the difference? Okay. I'm going to go down to a double screen here and let's see if I can answer that question. Thank you, Catherine. And I'm going to go back to this. See if I can find it here. What save and preview means is you're saving it and you're able to see what you did. If you save it, it's just saving it in your computer somewhere. Let me see if I can see where it is. And it allows you to print it as well yes. in preview. When you do save and preview, it allows yes. you to print? Yes. Okay. And review, save and review. Right. No preview. save and preview. Preview. Preview, yeah. Preview. Thank you. I thought I had it. Okay, any other questions? Honey, has the application been updated in Native Star? Yes, it is in there. Okay, thank you. That's where I went to the live site. All right. Honey? I had yes. gone in like about a week ago and it was the old form. <laughs> okay. Honey, this is Jeanette from Kaibito. Yes. Is it possible to have these webinars like in January or February? Because some of our um, board meetings are already set for like the first Thursday of the month. Yeah. And so, you know, then we have to wait a whole month and we'll be late. Our and so. Yeah. That's the same um, situation that we had here. We are already had our March school board meeting on Tuesday. There will and I'm one. sorry, and also I wasn't completed, but oh, also we had run into the same issue last year and so we some of us stayed late but our principal stayed up late midnight finishing this off and sending it off so I feel like you want this information then it should be foreseen earlier so that we won't have to uh, sweat the bullets here. <laughs> Thank I you. I agree. Thank you so much for that feedback. We agree. Um, we Laura and I are the only ones that do this Part B application, and we're also, I'm not going to make excuses, but you're right. It needs to be out earlier. Our goal, and now that we've made it current and, as, and as we're working with Native Star, this form next year will be available to all schools by July 12th. July, January. I'm sorry, January. <laughs> this form will be available to all schools next year by January 15th moving forward. We've made enough modifications to this document that we that all Native Star needs to do is change the school year. Okay, so again, you're right. 
that's uh, not you, that's us, and we appreciate the feedback. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for that comment, too, because um, this year what we ran into is the rollover of documents for um, school year 15 and 16. Uh, the Native Star, they usually roll over their documents, and it usually occurs in May or in April. So those were the things that we had to kind of like work out uh, among each other. So that's one reason why we try to give you a heads up notice on it. Thank you. Another problem I foresee too is even if we if we try to wait for our ELOs to approve it before we have the school board, I don't really think that's very practical either because sometimes we get a, you know, there's a long time between people having the time to review those. Oh, you mean when you finish it and it goes to their queue for review? Right, you said to do that and then yes. to wait for them to give you feedback before right. the school board signs it. Yeah. But I I don't think that there's that's a practical um, protocol either at this point in time because, I mean, I have my school board meeting in 45 minutes yeah. and I'm okay. done, but so yeah. well, I, I think we're going to have to do that. We're gonna, A lot of us are going to have to have them sign them before we get approval from our ELOs. Well, that is something that our aid that your ADDs have asked us to do, that it go to the ELOs, and I think that part of the issue that, we're, as the other caller had stated, is this is, of course, very late in submission. So whatever you need to do, I would what I would recommend that you do is that I see that you have your board meeting in 45 minutes. I say you send your documentation to your ELO now, today, so that they or they can see it. Okay, I just did. Thank okay. you, Connie. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Thanks. Connie, this is Sandy. I have a quick question. Um, is the Does the Part B application have the justification section included in the new one? It will be um, in the consolidated school-wide special ed spending plan that we're going to show you. It's in there. Okay. Yeah. That's something that we're added uh, for everyone. We've added the justification to the budget because we are finding that in your web budget or your budgets, justifications aren't being provided, and we're finding that it's becoming very, very critical. I'm going to put everyone on mute again so that we can continue. Wait, wait we have one question. Very okay. important. It, it concerns the consolidated budget. When are they going to fix the spreadsheet for the Part B? Yep. The formulas still don't work on it. Um, let's go in there, okay? Let me go in there. Let's go in there. Consolidated school wide budget? That is correct. The Part B was a mess, uh, was messed up this year. The formulas didn't work. The your which okay, let's let me uh let's go and look and see what that's going to look like, okay? Hold on. The conference is now in silent mode. Okay. Um we spoke of this. In earlier on the live website about the coordinated early intervening where you select yes or no that you want to participate that I showed you on the live web live site on Native Star and we talked about that you have to have a meets level uh, meets requirements on your level of determination the, um and the federal law, it indicates on the 307.11 on the early intervening services, the Secretary of Interior allows uh, for bureau-operated school, bureau-funded school, that they can uh, use 15% of their um, Part B funds to um, do uh, consolidated, coordinated early intervening services. And then those are for students um, that are not identified already as students with disabilities. These are for students um, that are in the at-risk level, and it's for students from kindergarten through uh, 12th, 12th grade. And the particular emphasis is usually in the K-3 because it's very important that you uh, work with that level and it's, it's uh, um, you can do intervention for that group of students and they will be able to go through and um, 
and um, not uh, continue with uh, to make improvement in their schooling. And uh, it, you have to make sure that these are students that are not, um, they do not have an IEP, but they need additional academic and behavioral support so they can be successful in the general education classroom. Um, CEIS is a general education activity. Um, it's voluntary. It's uh, where you can uh, use 15% uh, of the IDEA Part B funds. It's a supplemental fund to other program funds that can provide services or, or in addition to, and it cannot replace or supplant uh, services that students already receive. And like I said, it's specific to kindergarten through grade 12. CEIS is not a special education activity or program. That's why we're in, uh, stressing that um, don't, do not make your um, special education coordinator or teacher to run this program. It can be handled by someone in the general education uh, department, maybe a reading coach or a math coach, if that's your emphasis. And then um, it's not mandatory for Bureau of Indian Education funded school. It's, um, it's optional. And it's used to provide intervention to students who are currently identified as needing special um, who are currently identified as needing special education and related services. Uh, some of the allowed activities to implement the CEIS is uh, to employ a general education teacher who can deliver that um, intervention and then, or a, a general education um, paraprofessional. And then uh, the other one is professional development for uh, CEIS teachers. And maybe if you want to go with a school-wide, then it can be uh, for other teachers so they can learn how to provide um, uh, service, um, deliver uh, services to students who are in need of, who are at risk level. And it's uh, for providing educational and behavioral evaluation supports and services, including scientifically based literacy instruction. Um, in your CEIS plan submission, you need to identify, this is what uh, Connie already uh, went over, those are the components that you must address and make sure that they're thoroughly completed because we've been receiving uh, CEIS and then um, on the description, all we've had, like let's say for um, identify the type of intervention, all we've been having, um, some schools, they just indicate this is um, a, a tier three program and that's it and there's no description given. So please describe it thoroughly. And it has to be a, a scientifically research-based activity. And that's what you need to describe. And how is your progress monitoring? Uh, what, is the proce what process are you using? You have to um, provide a description on that too. And then the last one is uh, make sure you have a good description of your entrance tool. This is for um, if you want to place a student into CEIS, what are some tools that you use to, uh, the tools you use, you have to um, provide description of, of it. And also how do you exit these students from the program? <coughs> Um, some of uh, the monitoring that takes place for CEIS is that school has to submit uh, the, the plan by April 1st to uh, DPA and their uh, budget has to be a part of the spending plan, the CSW Special Education Spending Plan. And then the um, 
Your budget also needs to be updated using the CSW budget by or on or by January 15, 2016. Okay, so just to clarify, for April 1st, you have to include your Part B application along with your consolidated school-wide spending plan estimated using last year's funds or this year's funds of what you received. So whatever funds you received for this year, you want to use that in your CSW plan that you're going to submit. It's just estimated. We don't know how much you're going to get because you're, it's all based on your student count on the last Friday of October. So it's either going to be the same or it's going to be more, and it could be less depending on your student count. What we've done this year is we're not going to have you, last year we had you submit an updated consolidated school-wide plan in November. What we've determined this year to do is not have you submit until January 15, 2016. We figured by then you would know exactly your entire special ed funds that you received from ICEP, Part B, and any pro rata unmet needs or your um, level one awards. So rather than wait, try and get you to do it earlier, we're going to wait till January. By then you'll know exactly how much funds you have. So on January 15th, all schools will need to send an updated consolidated school-wide spending plan to show us all the funds that you received and how those funds are going to be used in the school year, upcoming school year, or current school year, 15-16. Um, the coordinated early intervening services um, is there is a, um, some technical assistance that can be provided in, in the NASA Special Education Process Guide. You just go to BIE website, and then the links are in NASA. Under NASA's training, you'll see the process guide and the procedure for CEIS is on pages 7 through 10. This process guide is really good because it not only talks about CEIS, but it tells you what documents you should be uploading into NASIS. So recommend going to this website and um, printing the document for yourself. So where will we as DPA look for the information about CEIS? We'll go to the NASIS site. We'll go and look at the years that you've requested for CEIS funds and determine how many students you had identified in CEIS. OSEP is asking information from us, so we are wanting you to ensure that you have um, accurate data in NASIS. So the document that, that's used to report this um, information is usually uh, called uh, Table 2. And in Table 2, uh, you need to make sure that you're um, reporting the accurate amount of money that you have uh, used for CEIS. If you used um, more than, you can't use, like we said, you can't use more than 15% 15, 15 of the Part B funds you received. Um, for early intervening services, um, I think I covered this. There is a report that we have to um, uh, sub, uh, submit annually. And that's the table one, that, I mean, table eight that I was uh, alluding to earlier. Um, if you have a change of mind on, like, let's say you submitted um, on your um, Part B application that you indicated um, that you're going to participate in the CEIS, what you need to do is later on, you decide not to do um, CEIS program, what you need to do is you need to write a memo or a letter on the school letterhead describing the reason the school well, decided not to participate in CEIS. Present the memo and the letter to the school board for review and approval because you have already um, presented them the application in, in April. And then so now you have to uh, inform them that you 
your decision is that you're going to rescind your um, uh, what what your decision was in doing the CEIS. And you have to provide appropriate signature from the school board and the school administration and submit the memo to DPA Special Education Unit. So those are the steps. What happened last year is that, or this, yeah, last year we had schools who found that they had more students coming in with disabilities than they anticipated, so they rescinded their CEIS. And so they were asking us, what do we do? What's pro the process? And so this is the process that Laura had spoke of, because we want to ensure that your students with disabilities are taken care of with the funds that are allocated for them. Um, through your CEIS, it's, um, it's an intervention process. This is what you're supposed to be doing prior to making any referral or making any recommendation for evaluation of a student with disability. That's one reason why um, we say that uh, you need to, uh, if you utilize the funds, you need to make sure that uh, it's inputted into the um, NASIS and the enrollment BIE reporting tab and it's, uh, you have to click on um, was the programs, and then in there you have to show, uh, get the new document, and then it's O2, put the student on being evaluated, and then that way it will help uh, Connie to choose um, in her reporting process too of those students that are being that have been evaluated at the 60-day timeline. So it's critical that uh, schools need to begin using that section. And then, um, so when uh, upon referral, if the school indicates the student is an evaluation process, like I said, put them on O2 status and remove them um, from receiving CEIS as indicated above. So that means there's a check mark in the enrollment uh, tab that where you, if a school is participating in CEIS, you have to make sure that that's what you check. That way, if we go to the um, to NASIS to find out if the school is um, is properly enrolling the student in, in, in their uh, native uh, in their NASIS, we can get the ad hoc report uh, like that. Okay, cooperative agreement unit. We're at half an hour, so I'm going to keep proceeding. The cooperative agreement unit is all schools must select. Again, I went through this on the Part B Live site on whether you choose to participate or not. Again, this is a guidance document so that all schools will have this as they proceed through going through the application. And a, co a cooperative agreement is, again, between the school and a provider to ensure that students with disabilities are receiving the needed services. The schools usually that participate in CAUs are in isolated areas, uh, schools that want to ensure consistency and can identify the parameters of the services based on the needs of the students. Um, for example, Navajo has a CAU in Eastern Navajo that some schools have a cooperative agreement unit. So they work with them and the CAU in Eastern Navajo provides the speech services, the psychological services, the OT services so that those schools don't have to go out and look for individual contractors to provide those students with disabilities. So this is something that some schools are using to save money by doing an agreement with a, um, as such as this. Another way to do CAU is if you just want to hire one special ed coordinator. If you have three schools in a, in a close proximity and you just want to hire a special ed coordinator that can serve all three schools, you can do that and use these funds for that as well. The CAU plan has to include a description of the purpose, the narrative, which we talked about, the scope of work, and again, the budget, which is going to be included in the CSW spending plan. Okay, submission of the LEA. We talked about this. What do we do when we complete the document? I kind of went through it, and again, this PowerPoint will provide you the guidance on what to do as you follow this. 
I'm not going to go through each page because we've gone through that, but you'll have this hard document in front of you to use as you move and apply and complete your Part B application. The role of the Native Star Reviewer, again, is to provide, they're going to either accept, revise, and submit, or return with revisions. Those are three options that the ELO or Native Star Coach will have as they review the two important documents, the Part B application and the CSW spending plan. So what does the review choices mean? Again, it's just giving you a description on um, what the terminology is and how they can work with their ELO or Native Star Coach. The Consolidated School-Wide Special Education Spending Plan, I've given you a couple of links on here. They're shortcuts so that you can get to the site quickly. If you open this document and you click on it, it should send you to that link. And we're going to answer that one question one person had about the formula that is happening. So I'm going to go back to the website. Again, remember the PowerPoint is a guidance, and you can see here that I'm providing guidance to you on how to get to the consolidated. It's going to be located on the BIE website. So give me a moment here as I get to that site. I'm going to go to Programs. I'm going to scroll down and go to Special Education. I'm going to scroll down, and on the right-hand side, it says Fiscal Management. And in the middle of this page, it says Consolidated School-Wide Budget. Do not use, if you have, I apologize, um, ADI and Native Star did not pull the projected school-wide budget that was located on Native Star. So we uh, put the updated version on the BIE EDU website. It's in the middle of the page called Consolidated School-Wide Budget. You're going to open it. It's going to ask you, do you want to open it with Microsoft Excel? And you're going to say, OK. It's going to got download to your computer. And if you don't see any tabs at the bottom of your page, like I am not seeing any right now, you're going to go to this little arrow right here to minimize the ribbon. I'm sorry. You're going to. I went to the wrong page. Hold on. Give me just a moment while I get this. There it is. There's this little box right here that minimizes it. It opens it up. You don't see the tabs. You point the arrow. And there's a box right below that that's got a square that says maximize. You're going to see the tabs at the bottom. You should see tabs at the bottom. That's how you're going to find the spending plan and the cover page. One of the first things that we want you to do is go to your file on the top of your ribbon and save as. What was happening is schools were calling us wanting copies of their budget that they submitted this last year. We don't keep those. We keep it as a hard copy so that we can scan and upload into our files. So it's important that schools save your consolidated school-wide budget somewhere in your computer so you can locate it when you need to upload it or send it to your ELO. Or when they need to update it. Or when they need to update it, yeah. So the first tab is your guidance. It provides you assistance in how to fill out the Part B application. The cover sheet spreadsheet. Cover sheet is similar to what we had last year. You're going to type in your name. We used to have drop down boxes, but when we updated it, it won't drop down for us anymore. So we're just going to have you guys type in your num information and your location code. If you don't know what your location code, we provided a tab at the bottom that says location code school and list. So you just need to find your name and type that information there. Schools are encouraged to use their last year's budget to complete this form. 
the formulas should work, but I'm going to try here. So what's your estimated amount of ICEP? I would use last year's numbers or this current year's numbers. How much carryover do you have based on your business manager's information or the web budget or your education report, balance report? And then what's your estimated Part B application? What are you asking funds for? What's the what's requesting? Enter the um, estimated Part B allocation. So what is it that you're asking last year's amount was? So it should automatically total here. And then if you're planning to participate in CEIS, how much are you going to do? If you're doing CAU, how much are you going to allocate? So it appears to me that's working. Then you're going to go to the SPED. One thing you have to remember is that schools, um, uh, you, you get these uh, funds based on the number of students that you have reported on your child count. So um, if you have a need uh, for more funds, that will be addressed uh, using the um, unmet needs fund. That's the purpose of it. So if you have a need, don't don't put it in in this um, spending plan. What you what you use is your uh, the amount that you have received for school year 1415, and you can always fix that, uh, adjust that later on in the January report for the actual amount you received. Spending plan. You're going to put an amount here if you have students that are in residential. We have three columns here. This is something that has been confusing schools. You have your 15% ISEP. You need to budget what you got last this past school year and put it in here. What is it going to be used for? Is it for a special ed teacher? Is it for a para? Is it for a substitute? And you're going to need to remember to put your FTEs in here. How many full-time equivalent is it? Is it half-time? Is it full-time? Is it quarter-time? Don't forget to fill in your FTEs. This is critical. You'll also see that under each line item, we've added justification. So in here, you're going to type, if you have two teachers, you need to justify why your school is needing two special ed teachers. Here's the other column for Part B carryover. If you have any carryover, it should be first in, first out. So you're going to use your 15% ISEP, your Part B, and then your current Part B allocation. So make sure you're looking at this in the manner that we are. And if it's not, then let us know how we can make this easier for you because we certainly want it to make it friendlier friendly user, user friendly, that's how it is. So I'm going to try this formula because of the okay, so each one of these has a line item and a justification. One of the things in January is if you put money in for residential, because you may have some, and we've told you in the past that you should allocate some of your Part B funds into residential, if by January of next year you don't have any students in residential, then you need to, when you submit your updated budget in January, you need to move that money out of there and move it into the bottom section so that that funds get used for your students with disabilities. Don't let it sit there and accumulate. Um, as you recall, OSEP is re really looking at our funds and we're having to provide information to OSEP on why we have excess funds. So we've put teachers in here and in here if you hold that, it gives you some guidance in regards to what we're looking for and what you should include. You just hover over that little triangle. It gives you guidance on how to complete it, which is similar to the first tab. 
We tried to integrate the two inform, um, documents so that you wouldn't have to go back and forth. If you are a high school, we highly recommend you look at transition coordinator or a teacher. Um, we are working, currently working on a new ICE, uh, indicator for OSEP, which is secondary transition, because we are finding that our students with disabilities are either not graduating or not engaged after high school. So this will become critical as we move forward. General supplies. This is an area that we need to clarify. If you hire three teachers in special ed above, you, each teacher is allocated $2,000 for general supplies and materials. Not your paras, not your job coach, but just your teachers. Assistive technology, what are you going to allocate? And again, you're going to indicate the justification. It's really, really critical that you try and use specific information as possible in this, especially when it comes to training. If you're going to have training for your staff, it would be helpful for us to know what training you're taking them to, what you're sending them to, so that you as a principal and as a teacher and as an ELO, you'll know exactly what your schools are planning to do. Yeah. Equipment, transportation, again, the CAU will include your psychs in here, your speech, your occupation, your audiologist. We did leave one line blank here in case you had other people that we did not include. And you are able to um, type in each one of these. If it's not open, I unlocked it, so this is not locked anymore. We had it locked, but then um, there were issues. So this is unlocked. So it should work. If you have any questions in relation to the spending plan, please let Laura and I know, and we'll be, be glad to provide that. I'm sure that your ELOs and ADDs and your Native Star coaches also can provide guidance. Um, the more places you can go, prior to coming to us, that would be appreciated because there's just the two of us working on this. And then while you're doing your budget, make sure they're allowable costs and then they're, um, you're using it where um, it's specific to the, um, to the program. It has to be reasonable. So those are things that you have to um, use. Can you show them the allowable costs? Okay. Okay. Where do I go? It's right up there in the guidance document. In this one? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get out of here. In the spending oh. plan, the one that. Okay. Let me go back to the BIE website. Go over that first page. Okay. Let me get back in there. Program. Special Ed. Fiscal management. I may be going fast. I hope you're able to follow me. Also, in the same page where you find the consolidated school-wide budget is the allowable cost document that you can print and save. And it gives you... Right there. Go okay. Tell them about it. Yeah. When, you, when you're having uh, trouble of what's allowable, this is a good page to use. Um, to, uh, to find out if uh, whatever you're doing is an excess cost. We have some questions that you have to answer. Uh, there are three questions. Those are important to, for you to uh, help you to determine if whatever you're doing is allowable for, um, for under IDEA. So the allowable cost document we recommend that you um, print this out for your own record so that you have this information. I want to go back to this page because I'm hoping I did not make any changes to this document. Okay, I'm going to unmute you and we'll 
We have about eight, 12 minutes for questions. if I can get out of here. Okay, I'm back on the WebEx page. Again, you'll see that this is um, all guidance documents on how to get to the consolidated school-wide budget. If you use the one that was on the Data Star projected page, we apologize um, because we weren't able to to get that off quick enough for schools to use, um, please submit what you have. We're not going to have you try and make any modifications or the only thing you'll need to add is justifications because that one on Native Star didn't have the justifications component. And it's still 14 And it still says 1415. So um, we know schools were trying to get this completed prior to the deadline date to get to their school board. So we're okay with what you did. I guess I just, I'm trying to think of the right word, but we're, whatever you had to do to get it done, we just want you to get it done. Okay, we're going to go to how do you upload the document into Native Star. And again, this is where a lot of people have issues on how to upload this WebEx, this WebEx and the document, the PowerPoint will provide you step-by-step step on how to upload a document. And again, I'm not going to leave, um, cover this in detail, only because it's going to be in this PowerPoint so that you can use it as a guide. We try to be as detailed as possible so that schools that are new to the BIE or personnel that are new to the BIE would be able to locate this information. You have some NACES. Um, Native Star staff at your school that probably are very um, knowledgeable about how to upload. So use your team at your school to provide and get assistance for uploading documents into Native Star. We do have a folder in the Native Star under the upload folder called IDEA Part B1516. That's where all the signature page goes to and your consolidated school-wide plan, your CAU and your CEIS plan will all go into this folder. So it's all located at one time. As stated earlier, you're going to present your Part B application and your spending plan to your school board, obtain signatures, and then upload that signature page into Native Star. Once you have uploaded it and it's been approved by your ELO, you're going to go look at your Submit tab in your Native Star, and you'll see a blue Submit button. You'll want to pe press that button once your ELO has accepted it so that it then becomes a PDF document, and then you'll be able to see that, and we will be able to see it once it's submitted. Again, the people responsible are your administrator to ensure that your Part B application is uploaded into Native Star. And we've included in here frequently asked questions. How do I print? It's Control plus P. And you have to do page by page. It does not go uh, consecutive. You're going to have to go to each page and do this Control P. How do I upload documents? We've provided that. We talked about how if you choose to not participate in CEIS, what you need to do. And then what documents do I need to upload? And we provided that as well. Here is our information in regards to how to contact us. If you have any questions, Laura and I are available to answer any questions you may have. Laura? I just want to make a clarification. When you upload, um, you don't need to upload the um, spending plan that is already in the system. All we need for you to upload is the signature page. Uh, she's so. talking about the Part B mm -hmm. application. Yeah, for the Part B application. 
Yeah. You will have to upload the consolidated school-wide plan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to take everyone off mute and give some time for questions. And again, we'll be staying a little bit longer if you have any questions other than what we talk about as a group. The conference is now in talk mode. I have one question. Where is the CAU amount on that budget page? Okay. Let me get there. It's going to be incorporated into the entire budget. So you are going to go to this section here. Okay, the CAU is going to be in the spending plan. And so if you have a coordinator, you put their salary here. Wherever their salary is going to be coming out of, you'll indicate the FTE and you'll indicate the um, amount. It's going to be incorporated within. It's not going to be a separate budget anymore. And your CAU, for example, your school psychologist, you'll include it in here. And in your justification, you'll put in here one, one psychologist for CAU. So if it's a contract, like we have a uh, OTPT contract, we would just put one one contract for whatever dollar amount? You'll put the amount in the um, column up here. So let's say you have one psychologist. You'll put that where that person's going to be paid out of, Part B. Maybe you'll put it as one. You'll put that amount here. And in your justification, you will write, contract for one psychologist for CAU. To serve how many kids? It would be nice to know how many kids they're going to be servicing. Thank you. Uh -huh. If you're having trouble, you can provide the, provide the explanation and your justification. Like uh, indicate on there, this is for the CAU. Connie, this is Brian. In the past, we were given an answer that the CAUs were for the BIE funded schools, not for the um, grant contract schools. Is that position changed then? The CAU? Yeah, because I had asked a year or two ago, I can't remember, because we have a cooperative we've set up, and um, the reason that, but we've not, we've just built it in the budget basically the way you just described. We've not done the mm -hmm. CAU application because. Um, Gloria had given me the answer that basically that wasn't required since they were tribal grant schools that they could um, utilize the money uh, accordingly to their needs. That's back when the CAUs were especially built into the line offices. Hold on, Brian. Are you talking about, um, like, for example, let's say um, you submit your CAU and then the BIE takes out your uh, fund um, because we have BIE schools who participate in um, CAU and they're the ones who can use this but if you have a, a contract I think those are the ones they do it with, um, with um, people that they contract I think that's what she's you're referring to let me get clarification, Brian, and then Laura and I will talk with Gloria, and then we'll send it out to everybody, the response to your question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'd also like to advocate following up on some of the other comments about the fact that school board meetings have been held already, yeah. which requires that they either schedule another meeting or makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for an mm -hmm. April 15th due date instead of an April 1st due date. That allows everyone time to complete the required tasks, and also to um, have school board meetings without having to schedule a second meeting, which is, in most cases, if not all cases, at a cost to the schools. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Connie. This is Jennifer from San View. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. I have kind of a similar question about the CAU, and so that if uh, you were talking about schools being in close proximity, if we did that, and that was kind of my similar question to 
Brian's was that um, can a CAU that was budgeted with a BIE school provide services to tribally controlled schools? Okay. My other question was, they use year by year basis or what? what is the criteria on those? Okay, I have your question written down, Jennifer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Connie? Yes. This is Arlene Davis from Hi, Arlene. Hi. Um, I don't see a spot for extended school year on here, so where it says other, can we just put ESY in there? Can you provide ESY services? And then we, like, we don't, we don't always have a lot of staff, like maybe one teacher and six ed techs or something like that, so can we just put that under others since you don't have a spot for ESY? Arlene, it's yes. up in the, mm -hmm. in the oh, direct okay. services okay. up in uh, objective one. Go up, uh, go up to where it says direct service. Um, right under certified teacher, use that um, highlighted. It says ESY teacher must be certified special education teacher. So that's where you include where, it. Where are you looking? Where are it's you? In the objective 1B. 1B1. One B one. One B one. Uh huh. If you hover over that line, it says salary includes fringe benefits of the special ed teacher. School extended school year teacher who work with students with disabilities and must be an employee of the LEA. Okay, but we never know which which teacher is going to provide that, so their salaries are all going to be different. See, we have we have six teachers and all their salaries are different. So if what if one or two teachers work, that is going to be a different amount. Okay. So, okay. They so, with the ed text, it's going to be a different amount. Okay. So. What you're going to do in this estimate is just guesstimate what it's going to be, and then in January you should have an idea what they're going to be, and then you can um, update it. Connie. Yes. Um, I wanted to go back. This is Tanya uh, with the Chittimacha. Um, the due date. Someone mentioned April 15th. So is it going to be pushed to April 15th instead of the 1st? No, that was something Brian was recommending. Okay. What we'd like to do is try, if you guys can just try and get it in as soon as possible by April 1st, that would be appreciated. I doubt that um, there will be any penalties in regards to tardiness. Okay, because that, you know, that, that's a concern for us, and I agree with him. The 15th would be a big help because we're going to be in the middle of testing. And, um, you know, it's so... Making it difficult. Louisiana is testing about four times this year with the uh, state department. You know, the state department. So, okay, so they won't be. You won't be penalized if you if you are past the April first. Submit it as soon as you can. So, Connie, in regards to that, how will that affect the level determination for the schools? Well, um, for the submission, timely submission. Correct. Um, we, if it's we, after April first. Yeah, we'll um, we'll work with Eugene on that as we move forward. Hello. Next question. Any other questions? This is Carla from Civic. Hi, Carla. Um, we have a question. Um, Connie. Back to your special. Hello, Connie. Can you hear me? Hold on. We can't Car hear Carla. Carla, can you speak Carla? louder? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's ringing? Is that that's not us? Someone has just go ahead. Someone hasn't put their phone on mute, so um, go ahead. On the special education personnel section that you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah. Just your employee salaries and FTEs. Yes. The FTEs is only for if it's an employee of the school. Correct? Or the CAU. Are we yeah, we don't use CAU. Okay, yeah. yeah. If then whoever's being employed by your school that's going to be using your fifty percent ISEP or your Part B funds. Okay. So if we have like the Navajo Consortium, the Navajo County Consortium that we contract with to do speech therapy 
and all that stuff. They're not employees, so they go somewhere else on this form. Is that correct? Right, do you pay for them with Part B funds? We yeah. do, but we don't pay their salary. They bill us so yeah, much as student cool. or whatever. They send us a bill. They're not employees of the school. They, they're service providers. Similar to what Brian We have a service contract with them. I think this is similar to what Brian was asking. Where do these? Where do they go? I will, um, Carla. I'll get back to you on that with Brian and Jennifer in regards to that. Okay. Now I have another question on the same in the same page. Um, we use the 15% that's allocated from ISEP. Um, some of our te regular teachers, not SPED teachers, that have. Uh, SPED students in their class as part of the inclusion program. We use some of those ISEP funds to pay up to 15% of that teacher's salary. So that is that is unallowable. Even though they they have SPED students in their class. Correct. Remember, general ed kids or special ed kids are general ed kids first. So if your teacher is a general ed teacher teaching all kids, including our students with disabilities, they should be paid out of the regular ed ISEP account, not 15% or Part B funds. Okay, that's so I don't have to worry about the rest of my questions. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hey, Connie? Yes. This is Kathy over at Showbound. I got a question about that related to that. Now, um, right now we currently are paying our counselor a percentage of her salary, and she deals with both Gen Ed kids and our kids. Is that allowable? It's it's allowable only the time. Um, one thing you have to remember is that uh, these students that are that that you have that. Um, it has to be specified under IEP. Like, for example, let's say you have um, 25 students, and out of there you have um, emotionally disturbed children. Right. And, of course, they will require counseling, maybe about one hour um, a week. Then you have to pay them for only those, um, like, for both of them. Let's say both of them are re Required to um, be with counseling for one hour per week, so that means two hours out of each week. You only pay them with um, Part B funds with the time that they um, provide that services to the students with disabilities. Okay. Yeah, because right now, well, right now the way it's set up, the way it was set up on the, um, she's getting. Um, 20% of her paycheck from me. So I need to go back and rectify, is that correct, and just have you'll the exact amount of hours? You'll have to calculate that all out right. based on what you have in your IEPs and then put it in your uh, Part B spending plan. Okay, so I'll, I need to move ahead and do that for next year, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Or, or by January 16th, you should have that updated. Okay, right, because you know that's what that's what I was telling everybody too. And they court they well, I won't get into the politics here right okay. now. But thank okay, thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, Connie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is Connie. Any other questions? I have a question. Okay. With with counseling services, um, what about uh, the CEIS? If we do the CEIS for behavior support services, could those hours then count uh, for that counselor servicing those students in the CEIS? If you have that uh, documented in your plan, so it, it's based on what you have in your plan. Remember, it's got, the CEIS for is for general ed students. Right, but okay. but um, you said that we could use 15% of that for the CEIS. Could that be applied to a counselor's salary if she's servicing students for behavioral support under that CEIS? So you're, let's say you participate in CEIS and you're going to take $200. 
to service students with, um, in the general ed population. And some of your students that are in general ed have behavioral, need behavioral support. Mm hmm Okay. So, and you put it in your plan, indicating okay. as such. Okay, then then she could service those general ed students, and we could charge her salary for that period of time to to the Part B or no. whatever. Well, C E I S. Yeah. How how would you be able to justify or not justify, but um, you know, if we have to describe scientifically based research yeah. and um, let me get off of here. That let would be a hard one with a counselor, would. wouldn't it? The it entrance would. and exit. Yeah. Because remember, CEIS is for those that are at high risk, students that are high risk. You're trying to work, um, use those funds for students that are high risk so they don't go into special ed or they're, at least you're attempting to uh, meet the needs of those students. I lost my PowerPoint. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint because I, I'm going to, when you get the PowerPoint, if you don't have it now, um, give us a call and I'll show it to you where we're, um, who am I talking with about the counseling on CEIS? So this, is, this is Phyllis Yazzie at Kaibito, and okay. we were considering putting that in our plan for the next year, but I want to make sure that it's allowable. Let's, uh, we, let's have a sidebar conversation on that and we'll okay. work through it. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I will let everybody know what the results of that conversation are. Connie, this is Trina. Just I, one, I was doing a web Clear something up for me. Regarding CEIS, we have to use a scientifically based research strategy. Not It cannot be a program like a reading program uh, unless it has the uh, science, science to back it up. That's correct? Right. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Um, we didn't spend our oh, All right, well, thank you everyone for participating. If you have any questions, yeah. um, further questions, feel, please feel free to contact mm -hmm. Laura or myself, and of course, Gloria, um, to answer any questions you may have. We've provided the information here. You can also email us. I will respond to everyone that had questions that I wasn't able to provide answers to because I don't want to give the wrong information out. And I will share that with everyone that attended.